So you can start. Uh, it's French, so sorry. Pardon? Sorry, it's French, it's a yeah, bit it's hard. French. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I will going to speak about PHP 7, which was released a few months ago. After a small introduction, I will try to enlighten a few internal change. Uh, of course, I will not speak about all the change. There is too much change. But just to understand why we you need to upgrade to PHP 7, what will be the benefit for you. Then the user change, the, mo the, the thing most users of PHP will see will, will have benefits. Then after the, which is mostly the why part, we, we go to the how part, I mean when and how PHP 7 will come, will go to Fedora. And of course, uh, some question. So, just for people who don't know me, uh, I am the mostly the PHP maintainer for Fedora on Red Hat, and I am also uh, now a PHP developer, which means I work upstream for the PHP project. So, the first slide is about. PHP next. So yes, for PHP developer, five plus one is seven. <laughs> Always a bit strange uh, computation. 
mathemat mathematics for, for PhD. <laughs> so <laughs> the question is, where is PHP 6? In, fa in fact, a few years ago, there was a, a PHP 6 uh, development branch, which was mostly uh, tried to introduce Unicode in PHP, to have Unicode everywhere. But after a few years of, of development, it, we decided to kill this branch. It was too bad for our performance and not enough benefit. It don't work. It. So we killed PHP 6, and so we decided to jump to PHP 7 because uh, if you search on the on internet, you, you will find articles and books about PHP 6. So to avoid any confusion, we are now go with PHP 7. So what that change internally, probably most of the thing you will never notice because if you use PHP, but it's for developers on to understand uh, some of the benefits. First, the goal of PHP 7 was to fix the gap of performance with HHVM. I don't know if you know HHVM, which is a, a, a sort of fork of PHP uh, developed by Facebook for their own need, and that people can use. A lot of people think to switch to HHVM because of performance, because it, it is really faster. So the main goal of PHP 7 was to fix the gap of performance. So uh, PHP 7 now uses a new engine, which is ZN Engine version 3, which introduces a lot of, really a lot of change. All the internal API has been uh, cleaned up, rewrite, um, to improve performance and to improve speed. For, I take one example, which is in all PHP 5, in you, if you look in the, in the code, you will see a lot of pointer to ZVAL. It was a, ZVAL is the main object in PHP. And now with PHP 7, we are going only to use ZVAL, which means the, the API is totally different. So everything which is built, C extension is now broken because the API is really a new API. We have also uh, a new memory management, which has been rewritten nearly from scratch, which is mostly inspired from uh, Gmalloc. Uh, ad it's not really Gmalloc, it's something adapted from Gmalloc, inspired from Gmalloc. So everything which has been done in, in, in this, which, which was called PHP NG during the development phase. Uh, we save a lot of memory. All the internal structure have been cleaned up, are smaller, so we allocate less memory. And we also do a lot less allocation. And everything contributes to speed. Another, uh, I took a big change because a lot of people, when they saw about the um, size uh, uh, T in, in 64, things we are going to fix the gap between 32 bytes and 64 by, uh, bit uh, build. No. So if you see this picture, you must remind this is an only Windows feature which allow Windows 64 bits to have 64 bits uh, for PHP. So this is really a no change for, for Linux on the over, over operating system. Except here, we use, um, in previous uh, PHP 5, we were using uh, integer for size, for size of all the, the screen and all of the objects. Now we are using size T which make uh, communication with a system library much more simple and much more clean, because we are all talking the same thing. A 
a few of the other challenges uh, I'd like to invite. Uh, before we have a, a huge par a parser, which parts the source code to, to be able to execute the code. Uh, now, we have, now with the Z engine free, we have a two pass parser. On the first pass, produce an abstract, abstract syntax tree, and then it is, it is passed into uh, opcode and executed. This, is, this could be very impressive for the future uh, when we are going to, to try to implement uh, JIT just in time. To, to get more speed. Most, most users of PHP don't care about this, but a developer on the debugger on a lot of uh, static analysis tool and so will take a lot of benefit of, of, this, of this part. I don't know if some of you have already tried to write a C extension for PHP. It was quite hard for when we are in, for the trade, for the trade safe uh, build, because we have to, to carry uh, the trade ID everywhere in the code, in, in every different core, it was quite hard. So now we have a, a, a native uh, trade, trade layer, so it's very, very simple. Uh, on, uh, quite sim very, very simple, you, you can clean up all the, the old stuff which is no more needed. Uh, you can keep the old code if you want to have an extension we work, which work with PHP 5 and PHP 7. But uh, all the macros are now anti-macro, so you clean up. About uh, what is called expectation. Expectation is, um, it was a, in fact, it's when you want to use asset in your, in your PHP code. Asset exists in PHP 5, but are mostly usable because when you you have insert into in your code, even if you are not in debug mode, if you are in production, you have a, a very um, you lose a lot of performance, and PHP become very slow because of assert. Asser, assertion have, have, have been rewritten from scratch, but now you can really use assert in your in your source code because when you are in production mode. This is a no cost. This is really clean up, remove from the opcode, and really, really no cost for execution. So now assert can be used in PHP 7. Starting with PHP 7. I add <coughs> a new uh, PHP 7 introduce what we call forever object. Uh, I will talk about this a bit later in the user long, but which is mostly what, what is used for exception in the language. But there is a lot of change with exception in, in the language. <coughs> As I can talk about all the changes PHP 7, so if you want, you can see this link, which are written all the RFC, which are draft, under discussion, under vote, and implemented in uh, PHP 7 and uh, in all PHP versions. So, what is the result? The result is performance. So, here is a, a small graph um, from Zen about PHP 5.6 and, and 7.0. So, and it's, it is not bad, uh, abs uh, abstract benchmark, it is a benchmark done on a real application. So, you have um, Z framework 1, Z framework 2, WordPress, Drupal, Sugar CRM, CRM, uh, Ma Magento, MediaWiki, so really real case application, something that everybody uses. On what we can see is globally twice faster. Really a, a huge performance boost. Are those page loads right? performance improvement in page loads? Uh, it's uh, rather the number of, of page saved per second, but uh, it's just, the result is the same. 
Um, so you can take this uh, as a joke, uh, but of course, if P3 is twice faster, this means you can shut down half of your server. Uh, yes, global warming, probably not the reason why people are going to use a PHP 7, but, <laughs> but really, when, when, when you only need half of the server you have today, this means you are going to lower the cost of your infrastructure. So this is one of the reasons why a lot of people want to switch as soon as possible to PHP 7 to be able to reduce the cost of running infrastructure. Really a huge, huge benefit. And of course, this also means as the language is much more faster, you are able to do much thing directly in PHP. You have less need for writing C extension because C extension are, of course, faster, but really hard to maintain. So you can now write for, for a lot of things. You are now able to use pure PHP library, pure PHP implementation. <coughs> About, uh, as I said, the, the internal API have really changed. It's really a new API, which means most of the extension which works for PHP 5 will not work for PHP 7. It's a huge, huge change. So here is a, um, a small list. It's not an exhaustive list of all the, the extensions which exist for PHP, but, but this is the list of the extensions which are already available in Fedora. So you see uh, today uh, there is around half of the extensions which are already ready for PHP 7. But some are really missing. Um, some are in progress, for example, Imagic or, or, or Memcache or, or Xdebug, which are really big extensions, very, very often used extensions. They are not ready, but close to be released. Some are not ready. We are waiting for upstream to port the extension. I, I can try to help one, uh, some of them. I already port some, but uh, we are waiting. So in the big one, which is missing, we have uh, EJ binary, uh, probably ra uh, Radius, Xcache, and Xcache-Prof, Twig, etc. So we are waiting for, for, for this extension. Uh, so, something which you have to notice, um, a few extensions have choose to release and to use the same version to produce a version which is compatible with both PHP 5 and PHP 7. This is really simpler for users, you use the same version for both. Uh, but this means you have a lot of conditional or, and it's much more complex to maintain. So uh, this is for example, uh, Xdebug for example, I have the same version which works for PHP 5 and PHP 7. But some other extension, I've choose to have one version for PHP 5 on another new version for PHP 7. So uh, uh, for example, a PCU, Version cat, uh, uh, sorry, version four works with PHP five, and version five works with PHP seven. So it can be confusing for users. So because you see a new version, but you can't install it with your old PHP five. No. So this is this is sort of blocker for me. Uh, Really, uh, we have uh, around 10 extensions released for PHP 7 in the last week. So really, things go, go further. We have new version uh, uh, every week, but we, I'm still waiting for some of them. Uh, just to enlighten one, which is very used, the Mongo extension uh, we, is compatible only with PHP 5 and will never be ported to PHP 7. So if you use this extension, you have to change your code to use something else. 
and something else is the MongoDB, the MongoDB extension, which is a bit different, which is really cleaner, and which is already compatible with PHP 5 and 7. So if you have PHP 5 code, you can start to work on moving from Mongo to MongoDB. So, something probably more simple, what change for user of PHP, for people writing application using PHP? First, PHP is not a type of language. So everything you have, a string or an integer or something else, PHP will try to change and to cast and to transform the, your, your, your data. This is by design. PHP was designed 20 years ago, and it was chosen to be a non typed language. Well, but users asked us, we want a typed language. We could have said, if you want a typed language, don't use PHP, use something else. But, so, first thing, uh, we introduce a Scarlet tip. Uh, in tip items. So you can say a function expect an int, which was not possible in PHP 5. PHP 5, you can say mm -hmm. I expect one object or one array, but not about Scala. So now you can say my function expect an integer. Really something new for <coughs> the PHP land. In the same way, you can also uh, uh, I don't really care of the code sample, but you can also say this function will return an array, which is really new. You can declare about the return tip of a function. Totally new, a, a, a really big change, but a change requested by our uh, user. And finally, we can say enter the strict tips mode, which means if the function expects an integer and you call it using a float, it will not work. Without this flag, it will work as before. It will convert the float to an integer and the function will work. You can have a warning and something. So now, if you want a street type of language, you can, using this, and for example, uh, I have not the code, but you will have fatal error when you are trying to, to call a function which, which expects an integer and you give, and you give it a, call, a float. So really, really a new word for PHP. User asked for it, we've done it. About exception. Exception is some, something old in uh, PHP. But you have exception, and you also have error. <laughs> and when you encounter uh, the, the code, encounter a fatal error, or parser error, or um, something, or now a tip error, the, pro the program just dies. And you, you, you are not able to catch. This is an error, this is not an exception. So now with PHP 7, we have, oh, sorry. We have, uh, I, I took already a four-level interface, which is the top level. We have exception, which are exactly the same that exception in PHP 5. And we have error, which now are exception, an, uh, another kind of exception which can, can be raised by type error or parser error. But no, you can catch them. It's very, very, very new. Uh, it's, this doesn't introduce change and incompatibility. This is very important. So if you have an old PHP 5 code which catch exception, it will continue to work on only catch exception. If you want to write PHP 7 code, you can now catch error, and you will catch, for example, 
uh, the, the type error. But there is no behavior change with PHP 5. PHP 5 will still run the same way, which was um, compatibility <laughs> was very, very important for a lot of features in, in PHP 7. So, of course, this is a major version. So, of course, we have break a few things. So, I'd like to enlight a few things which are, which breaks, which can break your application. Uh, the first, we re remove four extensions. Those extensions were deprecated for years, and for years, we are telling people, don't use this anymore. Of course, people are still using this. Uh, for example, the My MySQL extension is very used because there is tons of example in documentation on internet about using the MySQL extension. This is deprecated, this is dead, and this is unmaintained in PHP 5. If you have a bug in MySQL, nobody will fix it, even in PHP 5. Nobody cares about this extension. Really. So you have to switch to MySQL E or PDO MySQL, which exists for years. But I imagine people are coming, a lot of people are coming and cry. Well, we use my extension. <laughs> so, uh, Ereg is, is also very old. Uh, this one is uh, to access. Uh, uh, Microsoft uh, SQL Server, but it, it is uh, mostly maintained. Uh, I was a bit sad to see this extension disappear because uh, Windows uh, users have a good extension which, which, show, which is a native Windows SQL Server extension, but for Linux, we only have the MySQL extension. So, And we will also remove a lot of... Uh, Server, uh, server API, but probably if you look at the list, this is not something you, have, no, nobody uses this for years. This is all really deprecated things. Uh, of course, uh, Apache is the old Apache 1 uh, extension. We still have support for Apache 2. No, no problem. So, if you have old code, all the, all, all, another application running on PHP 5, you should really look at deprecated message. So I understand on a production machine, you, we always disable deprecated, uh, well, deprecated message, message, but really for development, we, we need to fix all the deprecated things with PHP 5, because when you go to PHP 7, deprecated and we are, are removed as it was expected. <coughs> Another deprecation. This, this is really about very old thing. This is PHP 4 constructor. Uh, probably if you look at some old code, you will see a function with the same name than, than, the, than the classes. And the class. This is the old constructor, constructor way. This is PHP 4, really, 10 years ago, which is totally deprecated. But PHP project, we are probably nice, two nice guys. So we don't remove it. We just deprecate it. Make it deprecated. Which means you can continue to use it, but it will be removed in PHP 8. But seriously, for me, this is a criteria for the, the thing I maintain. For example, I recently removed from a federal repository uh, more than 30 package, which uh, was a peer package. We are uh, we, we still use 
this constructor. And when I saw in an application or in a library uh, that the, the library worked with PHP 4, I said this one should die. <laughs> really, 10 years after PHP 5, it should die. But we still allow it, allow it until we just uh, write deprecated message in your log. On the, the other one, it's something which should and never exist, but which exists in PHP, which is you can do static call to not static method. method. This is very strong. Uh, if, if bar is a non-static method, you can call it statically. And uh, in, uh, we, have keep, we still allow it because uh, the peer uh, library use it a lot. And you, in the, the first line of the function, you have if uh, is set this, it's a normal call, else it's a static call. So uh, this is very awful, but it exists. It was a uh, old thing from PHP 4 again. So it still worked. <coughs> Another small break. Um, now, when you use internal classes, on the, there is an error in the constructor, PHP, which was an exception. But you can, guess, you can catch. This is really what every people writing uh, object application expect from uh, an object language. So this is just something that everybody asks us to do. So this can have change if you try to cast, if you try to, to have a, a, an exception handler or an error handler, as uh, the constructor now raise an exception rather than an error, you have to, to adapt your code to be able to catch properly the things. So, but it's just something very interesting for people wanting to, to write Nice code, really object code. So, the next one is probably the worst breakage in PHP 7. Uh, the, the examples are a bit complex, but when you have awful things like this, First, if you want such awful thing, <laughs> you have a, a problem. <coughs> you should really want f simpler things. But which we, with PHP 5, you, you, can have, you can have random interpretation, random understanding. With PHP 7, it's clearly left to right, in all cases. So you have, in, you have change in the behavior. I say this is the worst change. This is a cleanup. This is something we, which needs to be done at some point. But this is very hard to detect because you have to run the code to detect there is something break, broken. It, it doesn't work the same. Often, it, it, it will raise a parser error or an undefined object or something. So if you have unit tests, it's not a problem. You will detect it very quickly. But this is the worst thing because it's very hard to detect and to fix. Uh, the example are probably a bit complex. So last change, there is a new, some new uh, reserve keyword. Oops, sorry. Reserve keyword like, such as bool integer string, which has now keyword, but you cannot use it anymore. Yes, these, are, these breaks some application. I remember a, library, a big library which used cla uh, a class named string. So it doesn't work anymore. But yes, we need a reserve cable. So just to summarize, which is very important, the compatibility with PHP 5 is very good. Of course, I, I have talked, I have tried to enlighten the breakage. But the compatibility is very good. Most of the time, a clean application, a clean PHP 5 application will work without change on PHP 7. So uh, 
Yes, Symfony is already ready and is already compatible with PHP 7. Uh, Zen Framework uh, version uh, uh, 2.5 is already compatible. Uh, when I say it's compatible, I mean uh, Zen C it is compatible and we support it, which is very important. Because a lot of things work, but upstream that don't support PHP 7 yes, yet. So for this, to big piece, it is supported. So in Fedora, when, when are we going to see PHP 7 in Fedora? A lot of people ask me the question, we are still running 5.6 in Fedora. So how? In Fedora, we have a single stack, a single version of PHP. So the plan is to update PHP to 7.0.3 for all, I don't know, to work to ensure everything works. We have a, a nice tool, this is Cochet, and probably worth a, a talk only about this tool. Probably we'll have to drop and to remove a lot of things which are dead, unmaintained, and which are not compatible. So a big cleanup of the repository. Just the, the work is already done, just have to happen in Fedora. We can imagine a, a, a dual stack, which is just something I don't want to do, because if someone else wants to do it, I have very, very bad experience with PHP and PHP 5.3 in a real file, so I, like, I prefer to not, not do it in Fedora. We can imagine parallel version, having two stacks, like Python 2, Python 3. But this is not something only which is very interesting in Fedora because, as I said, compatibility is very good. So we don't have to keep two versions during 10 years, like the Python 2, Python 3 things. Really, we have to move from 5 to 7. Oops. And the last thing I'd like to see is software collection because this is really the best solution and something I'd like to see, but this is just not allowed in Fedora. So really, we should have PHP 7 since Fedora 22, and we should, when we, we are going to update to PHP 7, I think we should keep a PHP 5.6 software collection for our developer, if we want to provide a full feature distribution for developer, really, really, I think we need the preparation in Fedora. So, just a, a quick demo, if it, if it works. So, I, I'm just uh, pull uh, a clone of a Composer. Composer, it's uh, a PHP tool very well used just to, to show you how it works. So, I will. I'm going to activate the software collection so we don't care about the system I am running. It can be Fedora 23, it can be Real 6 or CentOS 7. I just switch to PHP 5.6 and run the unit test. It should be quite just. So we have five six. Oh, is it five six? Yeah. So six second. So now I switch to use three PHP seven. And I run the test suite again. And as you see, it's much faster and use less memory. Uh, I, I just switch to the presentation. Uh, time can, can vary of a runner. But globally, we have uh, half of the time and half of the memory. So really, it's worth it.
So just to the last slide, uh, when my plan, uh, if nobody complain, is to use Fedora 24 for a big cleanup to to upgrade things we need to be upgraded. For example, I remember on cloud need to be updated to 8.2, uh, clean up all the old stuff, then introduce PHP 7 in Fedora 25, another project, and probably PHP 7.1 for Fedora 26 or 27. This is, this is the plan. A few links you will be able to to find. Uh, just so, to a night, there is a, a Fedora PHP uh, special interest group with a mailing list. You can join if you want. And there is also a, a CentOS uh, special interest group about software creation. So if you have questions, Yeah. Yes, it's still needed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we of cash, you have something like uh, 10, a, fa a factor of 10. 10 uh, so really, yes, you, you still need it. And, but now, as the, the op -op cash is part of the of the of PHP itself, it is maintained with the, the language. It, we don't have any more the problem we, we encounter with um, uh, the old uh, 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 PC which was maintained separately, and which was late from, uh, for PHP 5.4, if I remember correctly. He, he was late, and he, he, he was a blocker for a lot of people. Now, Opcode, Opcache is part of PHP, so he's working with PHP 5, and he's working with PHP 7. There is absolutely no problem. So, I think you, you win. Thank you. Or, yeah. As often in, in PHP, we have, a, we have a discussion or we have a vote on the, the syntax was improved. It, it, it looks a, like, uh, a bit like C, so I think everybody will, will like it. So I think we are out of time, so I think we can talk uh, outside, but uh, I think we have to, to leave the, the room. Thanks. Nice presentation. I liked it a lot. I, I'm not a PHP fan, but it was an awesome presentation. Thanks. <laughs> may, uh, may we please have the? Oh. Uh, Just copy PDF if possible. Can you understand how it works? Here, at yes. the top? Yes. If the name is descriptive. Uh, the name is uh, yeah. DevConf PHP 7. So, yeah, it's quite really descriptive. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh,